Okay, I'm going to point out a few parts to this water cooled, well, this uh, water source heat pump. This is both an air conditioner and a heat pump, and it uses water as a condensing medium and water as a heat source in the heat mode. Okay, down here we've got a compressor, you can see part of it right there, and the rest of the components there, I'll go into those in a minute. Up above here, the air handler. The air handler has a coil that's pretty much similar to any other uh, air conditioning coil because it is transferring uh, either heat or cooling to uh, air traveling through. And of course your fan up there. Okay, let's look down here. This is a little hard to see, but here's our discharge line coming from the compressor. Okay, comes up into the bottom of the reversing valve. And let's say we're in cooling, then that uh, discharge line is going to go into this little round looking thing back there, which just happens to be a tube within a tube heat exchanger. So the hot gas goes in here uh, to the outer tube, the inner tube's got water in it, and the water absorbs the heat, condenses the refrigerant. There's a liquid line coming out of that heat exchanger. It goes up, okay, and here it is up here, and you have assorted cap tubes. If you can see those cap tubes uh, that feed the indoor coil. Of course, the suction line here, that goes back to the compressor through the reversing valve. Now, these same cap tubes are used for heat as well as cool. The refrigerant passes through the cap tubes is uh, the pressure is dropped and this liquid line becomes the start of the evaporator passes down here and into the heat exchanger water is running through there heat is absorbed from the water cooling the water down it comes out of the coil comes out right here this is an insulated line goes into the reversing valve and back to the suction line to the compressor. Comes out the discharge here of the compressor. Goes up to the large line, the insulated line here. This is a discharge line in the heat mode. Uh, the refrigerant passes into this coil and is condensed and comes back through the cap tubes backwards again and uh, goes through the entire cycle. So those are all the parts and what they do. Now there's a few safety parts on this thing. Okay, here we have a low pressure switch. So that if you have a low charge, it will shut down. Also, if there's no, uh, if there's low water flow, it'll shut down. Back behind there, you, that's a high pressure switch. Now it's broke. This machine came to me in massive states of disrepair. Uh, so that switch is actually broken, but that's a high pressure switch to shut it off if there's no flow of water in the cooling mode. Uh, there's one other part on this thing that's, uh, I'll see if I can get close to it. Okay, this little part here, it's a temperature control and there's a little cap tube above it that goes up to uh, the evaporator on the water-cooled evaporator or the water-cooled uh, heat exchanger. You can see that cap tube there. And it's uh, an anti-freeze-up device. So if there's no water flow uh, in the heat position, then that is going to shut it off rather than allowing the uh, heat exchanger to freeze up. Okay, this part here is a water valve. You can see there's a little cap tube on this side. If you looked at any of my earlier videos, you saw me uh, braze that up because it broke off. 
Uh, this goes to, it actually goes to the suction line or the discharge line. It's the same line. Remember, this is reversible. And what it does is it controls the amount of water that can pass through here. Water is coming here and moving this way through the heat exchanger. And I'll show you up here because we just have a hose on this. Uh, because this is not a this is just temporary hookup so the water comes through the bottom comes out the top yeah let's suppose it's in cooling so we're trying to condense the refrigerant so uh, this will not allow any water to pass through until it reaches a certain head pressure let's say 220 pounds something like that okay when it reaches 220 pounds this spring depresses and allows it to open okay it's a modulating valve meaning it's just going to open enough to keep the head pressure to within its limits this valve here is not just a water valve for cooling it's also a water valve to control the amount of refrigerator the amount of water moving into this thing to pick up heat off of the water to heat the home so as the water comes in here uh, in the heating mode pressure drops the pressure gets lower now this is an evaporator pressure gets lower then the valve will open more now the other one would open more if the pressure gets higher this one is opening if the pressure gets lower and adds more water through to pick up enough heat from the water to work. I know this may not be very understandable to you. I will uh, go into this valve, take it apart, and show exactly how it works in a later video. But this is the water valve. Newer uh, water source pumps don't use this. They use electronics uh, and assorted other things. Water furnace is one of them. Uh, to control the amount of water that flows through. This is an old geezer, so it's got this double valve on it. Okay, other than that, I've got the uh, control panel there. Uh, rat's nest of wires, of course, it's hanging out so I can show you the rest of the stuff. But that's pretty much it. All of it is stuck in this little place here it's really hard to get into these things these things are not service friendly but anyway that's the parts on it I'm gonna go over demonstrations on how it works and pressures and temperatures and stuff like that in further videos